Written Together, Episode 1.04, Segment 2, The Fairest of Them All. Hello, Hello. I'm Summer. I'm Janice. I'm Dee. I'm Kevin. And this is Written, Written Together. Together. Every season, we work collaboratively, collaboratively to tell a different story. Each episode of the season, one of us extends the story for where the last person left off. The rest of us don't know what's in store, so it's an adventure for, for everyone. everyone. Alliteration! <laughs> there for you go, shirt. for the perfect yeah. shirt that she's So, with. join us for fun, for mystery, creativity, but most of all, to be delighted by stories written, written together. together. Hi, campers. Welcome back to another thrilling episode of Written Together. As you know, we've had our first episode already, where I, Janice, was able to do the first episode entitled The Beginning that started with the first deadly sin that we picked, which was wrath. Now we have the rest of the crew here. If you guys can sound off. I'm Kevin. Hey. Summer. I'm Dee. And of course, Dee is going to be delighting us and with uh-huh. her episode this week. Yay, and I'm Dee. very excited. Are we actually going to be keeping everybody unmuted this time? or? Yeah, I think that was a mistake on my uh, last time. Sorry about that again. That's okay. We're learning and growing together. Yeah. Written together, growing together, learning together, screwing up together. <laughs> <laughs> drinking yeah. together drinking together oh wait right. are we not drinking together <laughs> apparently just not... i don't know <laughs> d and i were having wine last night in separate places so... <laughs> you were having I on that summer... <laughs> all right so i don't know is there any other business that needs to be done before the episode begins like i'm super stoked to hear this episode i don't think so i think we just uh jump right Agreed. in so go ahead and tell us the title again and then just go for it dude we're excited Okay. I started mine off with the definitions because I found it helpful. So greed is an intense and selfish desire for something, especially wealth, power, or food, avarice, cupidity, or covetousness. However, in the church, greed is an artificial, rapacious desire as well of the pursuit of material possessions. Your punishment, by the way, in hell for greed is you will be boiled alive in oil bear in mind it's the finest most luxurious boiling oil that money can buy of course but it is still boiling so (sighs) you know keep it horrible but keep it classy i like it (laughs) only the finest of oils to be boiled in (laughs) exactly okay here we go episode two the fairest of them all their exit wasn't as grand as greed had hoped just a barking order from Wrath and a few hand gestures from Envy. Why does Wrath get to order me around like that? And I just listen like a servant. I should be running the show. Envy, however, Greed loved how she could manipulate Envy. In fact, she couldn't get enough of it. The two of them were the perfect pair. They fit so well together, like a crisply tailored suit at a cocktail party. A lavish, elegant one in a penthouse suite overlooking New York's skyline. One where lobbyists and advocates feast on tantalizing benefits and handshake deals with government officials. Oh, how Green and Envy had played that room. Sometimes Envy would notice items that others possess and point them out to Greed. Envy knew that the two of them deserved those possessions. They always got what they wanted. Greed stood poised in a small dining room. Today, she wore a low-cut, carefully fitted black and white suit jacket, sharp angles demonstrating her powerful style. Her fashion begged to be even half as sharp and pointed as her demeanor. It made the room bend around her, her crisp white pants and stilettos fit perfectly. Every possession seemed magnetically pulled towards her. The room was frozen, holding its breath, wanting her all to itself. While she stood statuesque, Greed considered her position carefully. She felt she controlled a good number of the ghostly roommates, gluttony more so than pride. (laughs) Hmm, gluttony first, she thought. 
Greed let go of the room and moved with a cutting grace towards Envy, readied her gilded tongue, the need to control them vibrating within, and she whispered, Pride is always the hardest to find. I'll bet you I can find them first. After all, I do hold the most power. Greed's essence coiled as she twisted and spun Envy's desires, manipulating them to do what was clearly the harder of the two tasks. Envy shot Greed a look which showed how much they wished they had Greed's confidence. With silent determination, they took up upstairs towards the bedrooms. Greed smiled casually and then walked towards the kitchen where she absolutely knew gluttony would be. <laughs> Naturally. Raul stared blankly at the television. His mind felt like a thick, cold soup that had congealed and stagnated. There was always a reminder. There was always just one stupid little fucking thing that would keep him from moving. He really was trying to shut it all off and forget. But even in complete isolation, in a place Esteban had never been, Raul couldn't get away from his memory. Oof. In the hazy glow of the television, the nameless people sang jingles to him that they used to sing together. Mm. Esteban would say, no fussing, no cussing, no back talking, with an exaggerated Southern drawl. It's a line from a commercial that always made Raul laugh. They were each other's person, weren't they? What happened? Where did I go wrong? These moments hurt the most. He failed somehow. But he always did. That was powerful. Yeah. Rath paced and waited for the others to return. This completely unsatisfying situation was eating at her. There must be a way to make the house right again. They had to reach this human, fix him, and then, of course, make him feel all of the sins in the deadliest manner. The problem was going to be to get the seven of them to agree on a course of action without them completely destroying one another. Wrath watched Sloth and shook her head, <sighs> so grotesque, and thought, how are we ever going to do this? Greed walked towards the foyer. There was a muffled mechanical noise outside. She heard some voices out front and looked to see what was going on. Two men were getting out of a car parked at the driveway. <sighs> what a car it was. A matte silver Porsche 356 coupe in pristine condition. Convertible, of course. My girl. That's, <laughs> a, that's a good car. <laughs> she shivered with pleasure and a hungry smile grew. One man looked considerably younger than the other and they were both very well dressed. The older man was dressed in linen and dripping with gold. Necklace, bracelets, watch, and earrings. She could even feel the golden little toe ring in his front right loafer. Oof. The immediate signal that this was the man with all the money. That is amazing. Greed narrowed her eyes, looked around, and slid through the door to get a better look at the situation. The older man spoke to the younger man, trying to disguise his patronizing tone of voice, but not succeeding. <laughs> Reed liked that, so she slid closer to the older man, read his mind. Huff, Armand was his name. <laughs> she could feel it. He hasn't responded to your emails, Esteban, so we have to confront him. Armand shifted, feeling suddenly protective of his possession. A knowing smile spread across Greed's lips. This target, although way too easy, was nice after this dry spell. She deserved it. Being ignored by the human inside was pathetic. Greed's golden earrings returned. They shimmered like molten gold as she approached. She slid around Esteban's side, whispering, you know, this house could be yours too. Esteban stood a little taller, and she heard his thoughts dripping with gilded righteousness. You're right. He thinks he's done no wrong. He's always the victim. As he spoke, a tennis bracelet appeared on Greed's arm. 
as she lifted it to walk her fingers invisibly across the tension in Esteban's shoulders. A small, satisfying noise escaped her lips. The men walked to knock on the door, and greed stiffened. Oh, if the others find out the humans are here, I won't reap all the benefits, she thought. Quickly deciding what to do, Greed floated back to Armand and whispered, This confrontation could backfire, and you would get nothing. Make sure you always have something to gain. Pay to have another one come to the house. Draw up the papers. Esteban is emotional and will ruin everything. Armand placed his arm around Esteban, stopping him from walking forward. Wait, he said. I have another idea that will get us more, much more. It's what you deserve. I know you said you didn't want lawyers involved, but I think we can get this to look legal without having to actually go to court. Three ruby-encrusted bangles appeared jingling on Greed's wrists. Esteban hesitated, but he could feel that Armand was right. Greed swirled her fingers. I can get so much more, he thought. He straightened up, walked back to the car. Once back in the car, the two men grimaced with determination. Greed smiled with satisfaction and watched as they drove away. She waited until they had turned the corner before she made her way back inside. She found Envy had both pride and gluttony back in the room with the others. Good, she thought. They didn't see me and went to join them. The end. Oh, man. That was amazing. Oh, holy. Perfect. That was wonderful. That was I glorious. I love yeah. how you how you had that visual representation of their increasing in power. That was really clever. Love oh. it. Love it. Yay. That was so great. And I'm the, excited for the next chapter to find out how Greed is going to explain where this came from. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> Which D is so like, I was going to go there. <laughs> but I was going to go there, and then I thought, you know what? No. <laughs> and the room bending around her yeah that sequence of it bending around her and the power that you created with her it oh very captivating like greed is glorious I, that's all i can keep saying because every time you would describe parts of her i was just like oh my god yeah like, yeah. what? You yeah, took she, what is yeah. usually represented as a, more of a, a hoarding type of greed, like a, a a dragon sitting on their pile of gold kind of greed, and made it very elegant almost. Yeah. Very elegant, business-like, a high-class society type of greed instead of coveted greed. The very and oh, loved it, loved it. Bringing Armand and Esteban in as as the focus was genius. Oh yeah, hey, that was you. that was fantastic. I was like, I was like, no, Esteban and and <laughs> Armand did not just come come out of nowhere. Like, <laughs> who do they think they are? But I was like, yes, and of course he's driving that car, right? Oh, oh. that is just that was and mm. and I, to piggyback off of Kevin. I love where we're going with the story and how we're interpreting the seven deadly sins to kind of turn them on their ear, to not make them their fairly typical, like, you know, that like the mm. movie seven, you know, right. kind of thing where it's yeah. just yeah. the most Literal. extremes. Yeah. We're, we're using so much um, metaphor for it and, and so such current information especially when the politics and all of that are involved yeah. with greed, that is a perfect combination. And it's, yeah. it's just enough that, that it really kind of, no matter when anyone listens to this episode, that is going to be a timeless piece because yeah. that, that will always be, <laughs> wow. you know, <laughs> like that topic will always be where, you know, yeah. there are always going to be those greedy people who are always mm -hmm. together you know, enjoying the riches of the things that they, you know, that they've taken from others. So that's a, that is a really potent, and your writing is fantastic. Thank you. 
Fantastic. So I can't take okay, I'm not gonna write credit. anymore. I'm done. I'm just <laughs> gonna be executive producer. I'm just gonna announce like, hey guys, welcome to the show. And that's gonna be like it. Everybody else can write. I'm good. I always hilarious. remember what she said last episode, right? Like keep yes. your expectations low and then knock it out of the park. <laughs> yeah, well, she did. Successfully knocked. Yeah. <laughs> successfully oh, knocked. <laughs> so I I I went through it and it basically three different times wrote it. And the very last time I read it to Corbin, mm. who then was so excited and in in their excitement, uh like they were saying, well, what do you think they look like? And then I put a picture up of Joan Collins, like with oh, the hat and the whole yes. thing. Yes. And yes. they were yes. like, and yeah. they said, well, you haven't described her enough. Like describe her now. I need to know what she looks like. So then yeah. I went through and described her. And yeah. so it, it really helped having to be able to bounce those yeah. ideas off. Yeah. So. The minute you started to talk about her statuesque figure and all of that, it was like she popped into my head. It was like, oh, here she is. Like, holy <laughs> cow, she is amazing and striking. Like she's striking and amazing. You shouldn't like greed this much, but I really like, I'm like, she's <laughs> fantastic. And the fact that she looks at the bangles on her hand and she's like, yeah. <laughs> you know, like that's such diva wonderfulness. I love it. Yeah. And now we get to figure out what the next one does and who yeah. gets to determine that. Uh, dun, dun, dun. Well, let us turn to the wheels of randomness and see what they have to say. Boop. And <laughs> it's my love the official noise. <laughs> Favorite sound. Okay, so question. Uh oh. Do we want? Oh lord. Um, do we want reprises? Why did Wrath come up? Wrath came up. I would pick another one. Okay. Let's let's get them all out and then we'll revisit. Yeah. Right, Can right. you make that rewinding noise? <laughs> Yes. yes. <laughs> That's going to be the rewind. <laughs> Those are the unofficial noises. But, you know. Okay. We have top quality sound effects machine here. It's no <laughs> Kevin's <laughs> mouth. <laughs> oh, we spare no expense in written together. Spare no All expense. Right. Top All quality. Right. Boop. And boop. Sloth. <laughs> Are you calling the wheel of randomness sloth or is that what actually came up? I, I used to be able to do both of them at the same time. And now it's making me do one. Well, you know, now it's like, I am my own star during written together. So I'm, I know. <laughs> yeah. Time. It's gone to be its head. Thing. It got Our... greedy. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> nice. Nice. All right. Very so good. sloth and summer. Woohoo. Alliteration. Well, well, there you go shirt. for the yeah. perfect shirt that she's wearing. She's wearing such a great T-shirt. I was, I was actually hoping I'd get sloth, so I'm super really? excited. Sweet, that's fantastic. Great. Ooh, and summer's like, sloth I had Meyer. a feeling I was gonna get sloth, so it's already half done. I just <laughs> need to like edit it, and it'll be ready, no problem. <laughs> like I already knew what I wanted to say. That's it's really uh, awesome. I'm not gonna deny that. <laughs> I've been writing stuff in my head for like the last three weeks. She's like, I have notes, like lots of notes. And lots it's of fine. notes. All right. So uh, do we have any housekeeping to talk about? I don't no, think so. No, I think this is great. I think the listeners are probably intrigued at this point. Like, oh, what is going to happen next? Like all of these characters are starting to really take more shape. Yeah. Oh, and on that note, holy cow, Rao broke my heart heart oh yes this time Oof. like i was like i feel you buddy like there yeah. are like so many moments where i was just like wow like yeah that is that was heartbreaking but it, definitely that's part that's all part of it like developing him more and more and really understanding each character as they come up it is just getting better and better so i'm i'm hoping that the listeners are enjoying discovering them as much as we are as we discover them yeah me too and I hope we can help him. Yeah, right? we we can make him better so that I, we can so ruin him. <laughs> then not going to get a big push from sloth, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Slob is like, nah, nah, you guys go ahead. <laughs> I like sitting here. here watching TV. Yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. Dude, this guy's my favorite. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Why do you want to change him? <laughs> <laughs> that is That's hilarious. Funny. Well, Dundee. Very yeah, good well done, Dee. I'm going to probably completely ignore green in my story, so I don't have to deal with the jewelry that suddenly came out of nowhere. <laughs> I'll <laughs> flex with the next person. Yes. Sloth persona already. Ah, there you go. <laughs> it has a character already. <laughs> cool. Oh, that's great. Well, um, I guess then we can adjourn, right? I declare yeah. the match extinguished. Yay. See, yeah. Spare no expense. <laughs> that right, high well, quality budget, I tell you. Right, high quality. All the monies. All right, well, uh, thanks for tuning in, everybody, and we will see you next time. Bye. 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 Background music and sound effects courtesy of Zapsplat. Check him out at zapsplat.com. If you'd like to know more about Written Together and the stories we've told, visit us at writtentogether.com.